Happy Monday, Artlings. Today is April 20th, 2020, and this is Mrs. Bella's Messy Desk. This week, we are going to be doing a ridiculously hilarious and super fun technique called Forced Perspective. It's a photography technique, and most of you guys have done this before if you've ever played the game Squish Your Head. Forced Perspective is a technique that photographers use to trick your brain and your eyeballs into seeing something that's not there. I'm sure most of you have seen photos that kind of look like this. or photos with groups of people that look like this. You may have even seen photos that look completely impossible until you take a closer look and then you're like, oh, that's how they did it. See if you can figure out how the photographers made each of the three following photos. That last one was kind of crazy, wasn't it? Uh, I promise you, no humans were harmed in the filming or the taking of that picture. So, what else do we need to know about forced perspective before I can give you the challenge instructions? Well, let's take a look. Well, I figured if I was going to give you a little bit of history, I should dress like an art historian, right? Complete with beret, large book, and paintbrush. Actually, the book is really heavy, so I'm gonna put it down. And it's not even about art. However, I'll keep the hat on because I think it's cool. Artists and scientists have been using optical illusions for forever. Well, not forever, but at least since the 1500s. The first optical illusion that we're gonna talk about today is called anamorphic art. Anamorphic art is art that can only be viewed uh, in a certain point in space. So at any, any place other than that specific place, the art doesn't look right. The earliest examples of anamorphic art are attributed to scholar, scientist, and artist Leonardo da Vinci uh, in one of his journals, probably published in the middle to 1500s. And it was just a pair of eyes that was really weird looking on the paper. But then a cylindrical curved, right, mirrored surface put alongside of the drawing made the art come to life. Modern artists have used this technique since then to create really awesome images, some of which you can see uh, in the following few clips. Pretty neat, right? Uh, that last one was actually a sculpture and not a flat image that the artist had created to only be viewed when a cylindrical mirror was placed alongside it. So from that, the cylindrical mirror anamorphic art came all sorts of other stuff. In the middle 1500s, about the same time Leonardo was doing his work, two other artists came alongside and did some flat anamorphic paintings. Take a look at these. Both of these paintings were painted around the same time and used this anamorphic technique to make parts of their paintings or in the case of the portrait of Edward VI, the whole painting only viewable from a certain point of view. Okay, so what does all this flat stuff have to do with photography and taking pictures in forced perspective? The way that forced perspective works is that you have images that are in proportion to one another, bigger or smaller. So my hands are the same size, but if you view them from different distances, the hand in the foreground right here looks way bigger than the hand in the background. That's how forced perspective works. A current artist, French photographer Georges Rousse, creates hanging or floating shapes in space using the idea that your eye can be tricked into thinking something's there 
but it's really not. He forces your vision to play tricks on you, basically. Take a look at this short clip from the trailer for a documentary on his life and pay special attention to the last part of the trailer in which you'll see stairway and blue painting and you'll see the camera pan and then all of a sudden, poof, there's a square. Another cool example of anamorphic art. Take a look. All right, all right, I hear you. Too much history, I got it. Let's move on to the, uh, the challenge instructions. Your challenge this week is to take some forced perspective photographs. Say that five times fast, forced perspective, yeah, I can't do it. Anyway, you might want to be the photographer or maybe enlist your siblings or parents to help you take pictures in which you are either being the object of funniness or they are. Here are some examples that Mrs. Bellow's kid and I came up with for you guys to try. You can try some of these ideas or you can go make up your own. You can be the photographer or your parents can be the photographer or your sibling can be the photographer or you could set up a shot where you're the photographer and your cat is in it with a dinosaur. Man, you guys go crazy. If you're a Shady Oak Artling, you know how to get your images to me. Text, email, Flipgrid, I have all of it. If you're not a Shady Oak Artling, you can tag me on Instagram and Facebook at the Art and Makerspace. Use the hashtag Forced Perspective Photography and you'll be included with a bazillion other people who are doing the same thing. If you need inspiration, you can check out Pinterest or Google with your parents' permission, of course. The two words forced perspective or forced perspective photography and there are a million 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 crazy awesome examples about forced perspective photography out there if you don't need any more help go goodbye see you later the rest of this video will be dedicated to me showing you how we set up some of our shots so that you can get the idea of how it all works but if that's it goodbye see you later or keep watching your choice I'm going to show you how to put your friend in a jar. All right, friend, go that way. Get my jar in focus. Slow down. My arm is still not long enough. All right, can go back farther. I'll back up too. Oh, now you got to come closer. Just kidding. So she's going to come closer, 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 closer. That's good stop. Until she just fits inside the jar. And if the jar is not so disgusting like mine is, it probably would look better. But, all right, put your hands up. Well, don't, you don't have to see. Just put your hands up. Close your eyes. Like that. There you go. Perfect. Now she's almost going to get caught in the jar. And there you go. Mrs. Ballow's kid is going to help us stage the shot here with the 
dragons and the knights and stuff attacking the castle. She will be the giant who's going to come smash everything. All right, Mrs. Vela's kid, grab your axe. The axe or sword? Uh, axe, because it probably shows up better on the camera. Okay. All right, so come to your right. To your right, to your right, to your right, to your right, to your right. All right. Squat down and or bend over. All right, not too, it's too far. Back up. Yeah, you're there, right? Don't move. Put your axe out. Uh, to the either side. To either side. Look like you're swinging it. Too far. Now, twist the axe in your hand so that it goes broadside of the camera. Yes, now squat down a little bit more. And look angry. <laughs> You're a happy giant. Don't be a happy giant. You need to be an angry giant. <laughs> you can't help but laugh when you're trying to smash an imaginary castle. Okay. Alright, line it up. Better. Stop! <laughs> Don't move. Ugh. Good grief. Yeah. It's, it's not that easy. This is not that easy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> there's Mrs. Bellew's kid. Ugh. And there's the dragon she's going to be fighting. I am laying down on my back, testing my core strength. Alright, oh, set it up. Alright, put him on there. Alright, we're gonna pause for station identification. Okay, I think we've got him set up now. Alright, kiddo, grab your axe which is made of foam, and go run. I'm gonna sit up. Okay, that's good. Hang on right there. All right, come forward a little bit toward me. Eh, that's probably good. Yeah, let's get him higher. All right, you are gonna need to go to your right a little bit. All right. Maybe a little farther too, but go back, go back. Nope, go back the other way. Stop. Okay, I've got it set to where he looks like he's about to breathe fire down on you. So what would you do? How would you protect yourself if he was gonna breathe fire? And he's gonna be breathing fire from up there. What would you do? Like, yeah, you could block, yeah, 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 yeah. What if you just try to take a swing at him? Go for it. Nice, all right, that's how you set that up. That's how we set up our force perspective shots. Now go do your own. It's really fun. And you could even play squish your head if you wanted to. It's up to you. I really get those creative juices going. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Uh, until I see you next time, don't forget to tag, my, tag me on social media. Um, don't forget to stay safe. Bye. Good morning, morning, every. Good morning, 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 morning. Corona, <laughs> coronavirus, coronavirus. Well, happy Monday, everyone. This is a. Um, I can't figure this out. <sighs> All right, I think we've seen enough about what puss. Good morning. If you don't know me, I am the sh Okay. So here is my pink-haired pretzel hatchet. Yeah, I told you guys I would tell you a little bit more about this thing. I don't know if you can see. Ooh, that's really dirty. These are wiki sticks. They are... Let's see if I can get it. Like little string covered in this really pliable wax and I was given these crazy toys at a restaurant and I just started bending things it started with actually it didn't start with the pretzel it started with <laughs> the fact that I was the only person at the table who could not raise just one eyebrow I still can't do it 
and my face end up doing some really crazy things trying to do it. I decided to compensate for the fact that I could not raise one eyebrow by making my own eyebrow out of the green wiki stick. Take a look. Anyway, after I had fun twisting my fake green eyebrow, I just started twisting the rest of the colors and it started to turn into this creation. That was kind of mean. But yeah, I'll tell you next week.